Hello. Welcome back to my uh, YouTube channel um, for another rousing video. 15 minutes of Metacore quality and kind of the same thing that you get every time that somebody with an opinion jumps on YouTube with a webcam. Anyway, so first off, forgive me for being sick here a little bit. I had the I had the flu for the last three days, and I'm okay now, just recovering. Anyway, so forgive me if I uh, sound funny or if I break into a random course of hacking up my lungs. I can't really help it. Anyway, so the point of this video and what I wanted to address was actually something I felt inspired to talk about when I watched a video earlier. It was an interview by MSNBC by their interviewer, uh, I believe his name was Matthew Bashir, and he was interviewing the author of Love Wins, Rob Bell. Now, whatever your stance on the on Love Wins and Rob Bell, it wasn't that that jumped out at me. It was a question that the interviewer actually asked him. This interview came out at the time of the, uh, the tsunamis in Japan, when they completely ravaged the coast. And he asked him this question in relation to that natural disaster. You know, is God all-powerful, and does he not care about humanity? Or... Is he caring for humanity, but not all-powerful? Now, whatever the pretext or whatever that he went for, I, I'm i not even going to get into that. The point of this video is to answer that question, because I found myself in a very interesting per place listening to this video, watching Rob Bell's reaction, um... Which he gave a he gave a decent answer though not a little evasive admittedly I thought anyways but the point of it is is watching that video and hearing that question is that I given the choice between option A and option B I had to go with option C and that simply being the point that. God does care for humanity greatly, but he is also all-powerful. So, that brings up an interesting circumstance. Why do bad things happen, then? Why does he allow them? If he cares for us so much, then why does he allow us to suffer? And if he is all-powerful, then why wouldn't he stop it? Well, the truth of the matter is, is for as many people ask this question, it's actually a pretty simple answer. And it was answered in Genesis. And it's simply that we chose this. As, as obscure as it is, um, or as hard as it may be to swallow, it was our decision that led us to a world where there are things that are beyond our control. And there are things that he doesn't control. And that's not to say that God can't, as you can glean looking through the scriptures. I mean, he can come to the earth in the form of a pillar of fire and lead the Jews. He can lead storms, the seven plagues against Egypt. Uh, you go down the line, on and on and on. And yeah, God has full reign over all the earth. But that doesn't mean that he controls everything all the time. Unfortunately, there's a degree of chaos that was in spot introduced into this world when we brought death into it. See, in the garden, he created it perfect. He made everything as it was supposed to be. Now, he told Adam and Eve not to eat of that fruit, of the knowledge of good and evil. They did it anyway. Now, you can debate all you want as far as the value of the serpent, but at the end of the day, they chose to listen and they chose to eat. 
And as a result, God cursed us, and he cursed the land, and he cursed the wildlife, he cursed everything. This was the fall. And that was the beginning of it. See, he told us in the beginning not to do this. And see, he did care enough to tell us not to do this. And on top of that, he cared enough to provide us the way to be redeemed back into that relationship that we had, into that lifestyle, into that place that we were. It's still there. It's just we have to change something that we don't really seem very great at doing or willing to do all the time. Anyway, the point is, is that when he, he understood the ramifications of what we are going to bring into the world. That's why he told us not to do it in the first place. Lo and behold, we did it. And there were effects that were far deeper and farther reaching than we could have possibly understood. But God knew. Among those ramifications were death, destruction, decay, loss, time. This is kind of the grim reality that we brought onto ourselves. And unfortunately, as children of Adam and Eve, we share in that curse. We've lived in this world. And, you know, he's repeatedly tried to pull us out of it, starting with Abraham, then Israel, the entire nation of Israel, and then through Christ and his crucifixion. So it's not as though he's left us without a lifeline. He's thrown us it out there at us over and over and over again. And we haven't been willing to take it. At least not entirely. So the point of this is to address that simple question. You know, why does God allow bad things to happen? And the simple answer is because we chose for these things to happen. Just to reiterate, he allows them to happen just as he allows us free will. Well, God's all-powerful. He can stop it. Of course he can. I've personally seen him stop a snowstorm for simply requesting that he do it. I walked out. I demanded the storm to stop. Lo and behold, the snow stopped. That happened. It was that simple. To think that God does not have the ability to do that would be grievously mistaken. And to think that he doesn't care enough that he wouldn't also grievously mistaken. But the truth of the matter is is that unfortunately bad things do happen and that's the result of our choices or the choices of our forefathers the curse that we share, in, and the curse that he tries to redeem us from. Anyway, so as to his power, as to his care, it's all there. It's just that sometimes, you know, a hurricane rushes through the south and shatters New Orleans. And it doesn't have anything to do with righteous damn, righteous judgment or anything like that. It's because two storms got together, formed a superstorm, and then washed into the, washed through the south. Because that's the way that nature works at this point in time. There's chaos, there's death, there's destruction, there's pain. It's said that in the garden, everything is vegetarian. Well, biologically speaking, you know... Animals shouldn't be able to, you know, certain animals are designed to eat meat. Kind of. There's always an interesting story about this lion that refused to eat meat. Lived in Africa, I can't remember his name, but you could probably find it on Google. Anyway, no, nothing biologically different, he just rejected meat entirely. He lived a long, healthy life as a vegetarian. It's a lion. Biologically, they have a shortened intent. Lower intestine, or 
They have a shortened intestinal tract, which means that they require meat because they can supposedly they can't harvest the nutrients out of plant material. So, funny story with that. Now, as it relates to the whole bad things happen deal, another popular question to address is the one about, you know, well, okay, well, what about the people who never got to hear about God? It's a fair question, as there are plenty. Does God not care? Did they kind of miss out because... because he just wasn't there, because they didn't get the chance. Now, there are a lot of scriptures that people point to as far as an answer to that question is concerned. Oh, they knew, because he put it in their hearts. Well, yeah, there's that moralistic aspect that's kind of innate with all of us. But to be honest, the answer is quite simple, and it's twofold. One is that it's not our job to define what God does with the people who didn't know him. And two, well, one, because it's our job to teach them, to show them, to go out into the world and to share the gospel. It's very important. Because God wants a relationship with everyone now. And he wants them to choose him now like a father being torn away from their children. You don't want to wait for them to get a little older to be able to accept you. You want them now. They're your babies. The other half of it is that most people who ask that question and utilize that as kind of the uh, their dogma for claiming that they're not going to follow God or whatever because he doesn't care a lot of those people also don't care about people. About 60% of the people who I've heard make that argument will in the same, will in a different conversation state that the entire human race needs to be extirpated for the sake of the earth. The humanitarian thing is BS. It's just an excuse. But to answer that question very simply, and or rather to posit a possible answer to that question that may be a little less damning than uh, stop asking that question and do your job is this in 1 Peter 3 verses 18 and 19 talks about Peter talks about Jesus dying for sin once and for all but also that he was brought up he was brought back by the spirit and the same spirit with which he went to preach and preach to the spirits in prison who had been there since the days of Noah. So perhaps, perhaps that is the answer. Perhaps at the end, when it comes time for judgment, those who are in prison, which the holding areas are held in paradise, it's a whole other video. Anyway, it's very possible that Jesus will deal with them personally. And that's not to say that they're going to be saved. That's simply to say that he will deal with them personally. And they will choose. It didn't say that he brought multitudes up from heaven, or up to heaven from that. It simply said he went and preached to them. So there's a potential answer. And also an inspiration that God does care. And he isn't heartless. So hopefully this less than 15 minutes can help you to understand what many take a multitude of a lifetime to understand. And I hope it helps. Anyway, if you need more or want more or whatever, contact me.